Your Creative Push, episode 47. It's just important to remember that you're doing it for you. That's not your final say in art. That's not your only thing. You'll make more. Welcome to Your Creative Push, the podcast that pushes you to pursue your creative passions. I'm your host, Youngman Brown, and my guest today is Michael Shane Bloom. Michael is a professional photographer and filmmaker whose work consists of fine art landscape photography, aerial photography, aerial filmmaking, travel and adventure photography, and commercial time-lapse photography. He's worked with clients like Nike, Samsung, Verizon, Disney, BMW, Google, and many more. And his work has been published by National Geographic, Wired Magazine, Huffington Post, and The Weather Channel. Now, Michael, I first found you and uh, explored your work like uh, about a year ago, I guess. And since then, I've, you know, I've gone back and forth and looked at your work because I'm like a huge space nerd. Um, and when I started making this podcast like a month ago, I was like, I have to have this guy on the show. And when I went to go do research on you and like actually like learn about you as a person and not just you as an artist, uh, I was amazed to find out you're, you're only 25 years old. <laughs> yeah so um, <laughs> props to you for like you know figuring out what what you want to do in life and and just going for it because I was amazed like that you're you're so young yeah I you know it's it's funny I, I I mean I guess I've just always really really been in into creating just anything I could you know like even as a little kid you know I was the kid who would doodle all the time and you know, not do their homework because they were too busy doodling or painting or, you know, I mean, I was, I was always trying to create, I mean, that, that was like my favorite thing to do. So naturally photography just kind of fell into that. Uh, it was just one of those things to try. And, and over time it, I really fell in love with it and decided pretty early on that, you know, I kind of knew that's what I was going to do. Uh, I'd say by the age of probably 16, 15, 16, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. <laughs> Oh, that that's awesome, man! And it goes back to um, like on Instagram, your motto is um, "Eat, sleep, create," <laughs> which I love. Um, can you kind of elaborate on that, like that mission, that that motto? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, it's it it became kind of an obsession in in high school, early in high school. Just I would take pictures all the time. Like that's all I did. I mean, yeah, I did kid stuff too. I mean, I was a kid, but you know, I, every day after school, I'd get home and you know, that's all I would think about is like, I'm going to go out with my camera and take pictures. It didn't even matter what the pictures were of at the time. Like I could go into my, uh, you know, living room and I would set like a, I'd, I'd have like a glass of water on the table and the light would shine through the window and it'd be reflecting in the glass and it'd show all these interesting colors and shapes on the table. And I'd photograph that. I'd, Oh my God, look at the light on the table. That's awesome. Or I'd go in the backyard and find bees and try and get like a close up of a bee, you know, um, hovering near flowers, anything. I was just so interested in everything photography and, and I was so excited to create all the time. And that's kind of where that motto came in. It's like, for a while, that's all I did is eat, sleep, create, repeat, eat, sleep, create, you know. And obviously, I, you know, I'm, I was a kid and, and I was doing more stuff too. But it's just my favorite thing to do is just create. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't even necessarily need to be photography. It could be video. It could be, you know, making an illustration. But I just ha- have this strong urge to create and I don't know. I just thought that was a fun little tagline for it. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, and what does like that that do for you? Like, I know what eating and sleeping can you know do for your life, but <laughs> what does creation and, and making things and taking photographs like kind of what does that like mean to you? Well, there's two different levels of it for me. There's the personal level. There's there's what it does for me, you know, just directly, and then it, it's what it does for me, kind of like through other people in a way. And right. so I'll explain for, for me, you know, I, I it's just re- like the best way I can describe it is it's just really, really fun and really, really satisfying to create something. doesn't matter what it is. You could make a, you know, you could use Play-Doh and make a sculpture and first, you know, you finish that sculpture and there's just something so awesome about having done that. You can say, I did this, 
Like this is, I put a part of me in this, like I spent time, I envisioned what this was going to be and now it's here. And there's something so cool about that. Like I, I, over, you know, 11, 12 years, I still haven't gotten over how cool that is, how cool it is to be able to create something and say, I, I did this. And that's kind of what create does for me, you know, in, in photography, I, you know, I'll, I'll go out envision ideas for images and then I'll plan out my, my, uh, my shot and then I'll go out scout, you know, my composition and I'll shoot it and come back, think about it, edit it, you know, do post-production and then, and then release it. And it's just, the whole process is awesome to me. Just it, it, there's, it's so satisfying and it's so enjoyable. And I mean, that's why I chose to do it all the time and make it my career is because I, I love it, you know? Um, and then on the other side, there's something really fun about being able to create something and sharing it with people too. Like, you know, getting feedback, whether it be positive or negative, uh, and hopefully inspiring people. There's something like I, you know, at first that wasn't a really a thought of mine, like, I, you know, especially to, since I didn't know much about social media or anything like that. It was mostly me taking pictures and sharing them with myself <laughs> or with my friends and family, you know. Uh, but when I got into social media, I started posting and and some of the images became popular, or some of the videos became popular. And it really didn't th- know how important it was to people. Um, But I got so many messages saying, hey, you know, this is really awesome. It's like my favorite part of the day is waking up and I I grab a cup of coffee and then I I take a look at your page and it just makes me really happy. You know, it it gets me ready for the day. And I don't know, there's something really cool about that. So, you know, it goes, it's personal. And then it's also, you know, my, it's, it's also the ability to share it with other people that I think is really cool, especially now with the rise of social media. Yeah. And going along with that, I'd say you you really hit it perfectly because you kind of created it for yourself first. And I think that's really important to kind of um, not really think about what other people will think about it and just kind of do it, as you said, for yourself and share it with yourself or with your friends. Um, And then, you know, then the next step is, you know, sharing it with other people. But I think if you're honest with yourself and what you really want and kind of ignore what you think other people will like, I think it resonates even more with other people then because you're being so honest. Yeah, for me at least, I just I I don't really ever think about what somebody's gonna like or what they're not gonna like. I I don't know if that's selfish or not, but like no, it is no. my art, and I I want it to be me. And I just I'll do something, and if I think it's cool, then that's what I'm gonna do. Or if I have an idea for something, and I think it's it's gonna be a fun idea that'll express like a little piece of who I am, I'll I'll do it. And you know what? Sometimes it's not as well received as other stuff. I mean, there's, there's tons of images that I take that I think are really cool. And I'm like, Oh my God, this is one of my favorite images. And then I post it and people are like, meh, no, meh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I mean, that's, that's all part of it. And it's, it's cool to see that. I mean, it's, it's interesting to see what people do enjoy and what they don't, but I know what I enjoy as well. And I'm I'm not going to stop doing what I enjoy just because, you know, it's not the majority vote or something like that. Yeah. And I mean, uh, like you said, uh, some things will resonate with people more than others. But w- why do you think in, in general that like nature and, and space and, you know, the stuff that you put out there, why do you think that resonates um, so closely with people? As you said, like the guy that, you know, wakes up and has his coffee and looks at your art and then starts his day. Why do you think it resonates with people like that? I think there's a few different reasons. I think there's a lot of reasons, actually. Mm-hmm. But the, the ones that I can think of on the top of my head are, you know, the, the first one is, you know, people, a lot of people have been to these places before and seeing an image from that place kind of like triggers these usually positive memories or at least, you know, memories that they'd want to think of. And, you know, I'll post a picture of, let's say Yosemite and somebody's like, oh my God, I, you know, I went there for, you know, I used to go there every year with my family and it kind of brings up these like happy thoughts. And, and, you know, obviously this picture that I've, taken it doesn't really represent their memory it's it's my experience you know it's what i saw it's what i you know not necessarily what i saw but like what i it was it was my trip you know it's like this interesting sunset or maybe a milky way or something but it does you know just seeing the location in a different way by a photographer you know i mean i feel like it triggers that and and it makes people happy when they see stuff like that uh and then along with that you know not beyond memories i mean people who maybe don't have the opportunity to go out and I mean, like, you know, everyone has the opportunity to travel a little bit, but going out and seeing the Milky Way, you know, out in the middle of the desert. I mean, I feel like a lot of people, a lot of people tell me they maybe not don't have the opportunity to do that, especially in the places they live. You know, some people live in places where 
there's just too much light pollution and, and it's really tough to get out and you know it's, it's tough to go out in the middle of the night for for the whole night you know drive six seven hours and then go back and go to work so um, I feel like for people who aren't able to maybe see the night sky, they can kind of appreciate that. Or people who just in general aren't able to travel as much as they'd like, or even people who are a little too old to be able to, you know, hike some of the places I go to, they can still really appreciate the images, which I think is cool. Yes, for sure. The images and the time lapse, which um, I wanted to kind of get into next. I watched you, you have a video called The Art of the Time Lapse, which I'll, I'll link in the show notes. I highly suggest. Well, I... I out of all, if you ha- if you don't usually go to the the show notes if you're listening um and and look at the different artists this is one you have to go to and, and, <laughs> and check it out especially the t- the time lapse because I don't know it's just so beautiful um but anyway th- so there's the art of the time lapse and I was really inspired by it because it's you know when you look at like one of your time lapses you're like wow like. I don't think I could ever be able to like capture what he captured, but uh, you kind of go into detail about it. And even though it seems like com- complex in nature, it's kind of a very simple process. So I was wondering if you could kind of talk about that just a little bit. Yeah, sure. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not a very technical person. Like when you watch a time-lapse video, maybe it seems like there's all this crazy technical stuff that's involved with it. And I'm really only as technical as I need to be to do that. Like I'm not very good at building stuff. Well, I mean, I can build Legos and stuff like that, but I'm not, you know, I'm not like a mechanic or anything or an engineer or anything like that. Um, I, ha- you know, and if you watch the art of the time lapse, uh, that it's actually a little short documentary that vice and the creator project did on me a few years ago, but I kind of talk about being dyslexic and having like, I have, I've had, I have a math disorder and stuff like that. So um, I'm not a very technical person. I, I do everything based on creativity. I'm, you know, creative first, technical second. But, you know, to be able to do these time lapses, there's definitely some technical equipment involved, but it's actually not hard to learn it all. It's more just the drive to get out and have a concept and explore the concept and, and you know, compose shots and produce a video. I think that's that's the toughest part. The equipment's not hard to learn, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's fairly easy. Yeah. And I love, um, in existence, uh, which is one of your, I guess, was that one of your first like kind of features, I guess that you put out? Yeah, that was my first one. I was doing that when I was still in, I, I, I made that and released it when I was still in college. Um, yeah, that here's, here's another one. You got to go to the show. Notes. And by, by the way, the show notes page is your creative push.com slash Michael Shane Bloom. And that's S H A I N B L U M. But, um, existence is, is really cool because it kind of ha- shows the contrast between, um, nature and, and I guess humans and, and our technology and just kind of like our hustle bustle. Uh, you know, you see the cars moving so fast, but then you see, you know, this, the stars moving across the sky so slow. It's just like a yeah. really, and, and well-timed with the music as well. Thank you. Yeah, that was a really fun pro. I mean, that was, I mean, I had done little time-lapse things before that, but that was my first real release and I didn't really expect it to, you know, I was mostly just putting on online for friends and family, but that, that was actually around the time that I started getting popular on social media and people started to kind of take notice to some of the images and videos I was posting, which was really cool, but it was very unexpected, to be honest. Really? You, you didn't expect that kind of a response? No, I mean, I expected people to kind of like the video that I put out, but I really didn't expect it to go viral or anything. I mean, it's up to like 2 million views. If you had told me that, that like uh, the video I was making would go to 2 million views when I was, you know, three or four years ago, I'd been like, no, right. <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what does that kind of do for like you in, in your career and just like your, your confidence in, in doing this? I think everyone wants a little bit of positive reinforcement for what they're doing, you know? Oh, for sure. I mean, pe- people like getting compliments on their work and um, I get my fair share of compliments and then I get my fair share of critiques, you know, mm-hmm. and, it, and it all just comes with it. But no, I, I, I mean, I was, it was awesome to see that. I, I was like a dream, you know, to have people inspired by the time lapse and for it to have reached as many people as it did. And definitely for it, it helped the business, I would say. I mean, it, couldn't have hurt the business, you know, having, having a video go viral. I mean, that was probably around the time I started doing time-lapse and photography commercially too, you know, just releasing images and having them be more popular and then releasing videos and having those go pretty popular as well. 
Mm-hmm. And and another one of your popular videos is uh, Mirror City, which um, I <laughs> I feel like I'm just complimenting you this whole thing, but <laughs> it's I think one of the like the coolest pieces of art that I've ever seen. Actually, um, it 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 is timed so well with um one of my favorite <laughs> songs too, which might have something to do with it. But um, I love Bass Nectar. Um, yeah, yeah. So can you kind of talk about like the difference between um, that and existence and like kind of where you got that idea kind of conceptually? Sure. Sure. Yeah. And thank you again. Um, You know, that was a really fun, that was a super fun video to make. I mean, every, everything that every project that I work on, I think is fun, but um, existence was, you know, the concept was, yeah, it's kind of that juxtaposition of, of the city versus nature kind of mankind versus versus like our natural world. And, you know, it was very pretty straightforward time-lapse sequence, you know, Milky Way, nature, and then the city and um, Mere City was Mere City. The video was meant to be an abstract piece. And what's funny about it is I was never going to post that online. I was going to make it and then keep it private and just keep it for friends because I didn't really think people would get it. I thought people mm-hmm. were going to be like, ah, this is way too weird. <laughs> this is way too weird. No one's going to connect with it. I'm weird. No one's as weird as me. This is, right. not gonna do this. But no, I, you know, it's funny. I released that video and it got such a positive response. I was like, wow, I'm, I'm so, I'm, I can't believe people like connected with this in the same way I did creating it, which I thought was amazing. But, uh, you know, creating that video, the whole concept came to me, you know, I, I, I did a lot of digital art too. Like I was messing around with Photoshop and before that I, you know, before I could afford Photoshop, there was a program called fireworks. It was a macro media program that you could kind of mess with images on. Um, That was before Adobe bought macro media. And I, yeah, I used to mess around with that program and I used to take like, I used to take slices of images and mirror them all the time. There was something really cool about that. I don't know why I like the symmetry of it, you know, Mm -hmm. taking like a picture of a city and then mirroring it. And, you know, while I was doing time-lapse, pretty early on, I was like, you know, there's got to be a way of doing what I used to do to images, but just do that, you know, for video and for time-lapses. I wonder, you know, if I can make something like that. And then, you know, I started kind of forming the concept for the video, this this idea of, you know, first it starts out and it's, you know, it's still pretty abstract, but there's recognizable objects, recognizable buildings um, you know, iconic buildings that you can kind of see and you can be like, oh, that's still, that's still a city block or, oh, that's still people walking down the street, but it's mirrored. And then over time, as the video progresses and the song progresses, this, the more abstractity kind of comes in and the video becomes more and more abstract to the point where, you, where you're just looking at shapes and colors and they're kind of all just like blending and churning and, um, like a kaleidoscope. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's, that's definitely kind of the idea for it is is for the video to go more abstract as the video goes on and i it was just a really fun concept to explore i've always been interested in mirror images and i i don't know i hope i can do something like that in the future i i don't know how i would expand on that idea but i have a few ideas for for what i can do well please do them <laughs> um yeah. what advice would you give to somebody like, like you said you you just wanted to kind of do it for yourself and you're like nobody's as weird as i am um i i can definitely relate to that as well just like having the f- kind of fear of you know putting it out there well, what would you suggest to somebody who um <laughs> who does think that they're weird and that nobody will connect to their stuff <laughs> and they're maybe even you know shy or embarrassed to to kind of put it out what, what advice would you give them to them to kind of push them to put it out you know, just do it. <laughs> I don't know. Right, I mean, right. the, the thing is, I mean, I've, I've had so many images that I look at and I'm like, I don't know if people are going to connect with this. And, you know, oftentimes those are the images that people connect with the most. Those are the ones that they're the most excited about or the ones that I was so worried about. Hmm. And I'm like, after the fact, you kind of look at it and you're kind of relieved and you're like, why did I even, why was I, why was I stressed out about this? The thing is, you know, people may not share your vision. They're not going to every time it's, you know, and, and definitely not everyone is going to share your vision any of the time. You know, it's like there, you know, there's always going to be people that aren't going to understand what you're doing. And it's just important to remember that you're doing it for you and it's your art. You know, I mean, yeah, like I said, I've, I've released stuff and it hasn't gotten the best 
response and that's okay. You know, you move on. That's not your final say in art. That's not your only thing. You know, you'll make more, you'll make more art. You'll either continue to do what you do or change your art. As an artist, you're always progressing as well. I mean, I always look at stuff that I've done in the past. And I, I sometimes cringe at some of, the, some of the work I've released. Like, Ugh. I wouldn't put that out now. But, you know, right. I mean, we all grow as artists. So it's just important to remember that you're doing it for you. It's, it's your art. And, you know, sometimes you just have to say, I don't necessarily care what people are going to say about this. It's just if they like it, they like it. If they don't, then that's okay. We'll move on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, do you have like a formula for balancing your time with all the different things that kind of go into what you do? Yeah, that's one of the toughest things is just balancing the time, especially as a professional photographer, or filmmaker, you know, it's like you want to go out and just shoot all the time and edit all the time and that's it. But there's so much more that goes into it. Logistic planning, you know, business emails and just the pretty much just everything that goes into, I guess, running a, a photography business or running a, a video business. But yeah, it's, it's tough to balance it all out. There's some times where I feel like I'm maybe, maybe I'm, I'm taking too many photos and editing them too much and not focusing enough on the business side. And then there's some times where I'm like, you know what, I need a break. I'm focusing too much on the business. I need to go out and produce, produce content, you know, and do stuff for myself. I, I think it's, you know, it's like a 50, 50 thing for me. I mean, they, you know, I'll spend, I'll spend a good amount of time traveling and focused a little less on the business, just producing content, having fun, exploring. And then, and then the other side, you know, half the time I'm, I'm probably at my desk working on emails and still processing images and, and taking images as well. But yeah, it's, it's tough to balance it out. That's, I think that's one of the toughest things. And it, it, you know, I found myself going into little modes where I know I'm doing too much of one thing. And I kind of have to like, think about I have to take a moment and think about it and be like, wait, I should probably go out. And you know, it's like, if I've been working too hard on the business side, I'm like, all right, wait, I should go out and take pictures. This is what I'm, I mean, that's the whole reason I started doing this, right? Is to go out and take pictures. Anyways. And then, and then how, like in that particular instance, in that scenario, how do you kind of force yourself to go out and kind of ignore because i'm sure it has to be like kind of pressing all the sec secretarial like duties that you have to do or you know to keep the business running how do you put that on pause and still kind of feel okay about it ah, that's the toughest th it's literally that's the toughest thing I, just, yeah. I can't think of anything tougher than that then the tough thing is you know i don't i don't have a weekend i don't have a day off i mean i can make days off I mean, I work every single day all the time. I'm always, you know, working, but eat, sleep, create. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But if I do decide to take a day off and I do, obviously, you know, I, I'll take, I'll, I'll just take a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday off and be like, I'm just not going to do anything today. I'm going to go to the beach, you know, but it is so tough. You, you, you're sitting at the beach and you still have that in the back of your mind. Like, Oh, I should be working right now. That is, I, I haven't exactly figured out a way of get, get, like getting rid of those thoughts. I guess it's just, you know what, at the end of the day, if, if you know you're working, you know, you're working a lot and you need to take breaks. Like, so I tell myself, you know what, this is good. You know, you may think in the back of your head, like I should be, you know, filling out emails right now. I shouldn't be at the beach drinking a beer, but I'm going to do it anyways, because it's, you know, I deserve it. <laughs> I guess I deserve it, you know? Uh, I haven't quite figured out a way of blocking that out. I just kind of say to my, I just kind of balance it out with saying to myself, okay, you know what, you, you deserve a break. You need this. This is healthy. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's, you know, something that can resonate with a lot of people listening too. I mean, you're somebody who does this full time and you have established a, a great body of work, but you know, for people who are kind of sitting on the couch and I think for me, I can relate to this too. Um, when you sit on the couch and watch TV or drink beer or do whatever, <laughs> whatever it is that kind of you distract yourself from, you know, even starting to be creative or, or doing that in your spare time. I think it's something that will always be with you all this, <laughs> this idea of, you know, I could always be doing something else. And I think that if you have that idea in your head while you're sitting on the couch or, you know, listening to podcast after podcast about different things and you're thinking I should be doing the work, um, that is just, you're going to be stuck with that for the rest of your life until you kind of start doing the work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the other thing, you know, the thing that you can do though, 
which I found helps is like, I, you know, if I'm editing video or, well, not really video because I've got audio that I've got to deal with, but like if I'm editing photos, I'll listen to music, you know, I can drink a beer and listen to music and edit photos. It's awesome. You know, I mean, it's still work for me, but I mean, it's, you know, you can, you can balance it out with doing other stuff too. Like I'll have the, you know, sometimes I'll have the TV on in the background while I, while I'm working on stuff and, and that, that kind of helps, you know, so it makes me feel like you're not just working. You're, you're still, you know, doing, you're still relaxing a little bit too. For sure. And I think it's important too, to also make it not feel like work, work, you know, where you're like, oh, I can't do anything else while I, you know, I can't, I got to lock myself in a room. I can't talk to my wife. I can't talk to friends. Got to turn the internet off. Like, I think sometimes <laughs> you can kind of fill it with a little bit of distractions too. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, it's having those, those distractions help helps a lot when, when you're just dealing with something, you know, I mean, there, there's, even in this job, it can get repetitive, it can get mundane, it's tough to get burnt out. I mean, that's another really tough thing about photography and art in general it is tough to not get burnt out on what you're doing, doing the same thing over and over again. And the thing is, when you know, when you're doing this freelance, there's no one telling you you have to. I mean, I, I'm, I could just stop <laughs> and not do anything, right? I mean, it'd be really bad. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. But I mean, there's no one telling me I have to do anything right now. So, and that's kind of that's kind of a scary thought, especially when you're a procrastinator like I am, <laughs> you know. But um, you get you know, burning yourself out on something, I, I find that just like keeping a variety, especially in photography and video, just keeping a variety of things you can do. Like get it, you know. I got into aerial photography, and I like night sky, but I also like shooting you know beaches, mountains, waterfalls. I like shooting video, time lapse, just as much different stuff I can do, you know, city, nature so that I'm never getting bored of what I'm doing. If I find I'm doing too much of one thing, I'll switch it up so that I'm doing something else. And it keeps it fresh. It keeps me excited about what I'm doing. Yeah, that, that's great advice. Um, and before we get into our final push, I just wanted to ask, um, for somebody who like looks at your work and thinks, wow, this is amazing, but like, how could I even do this? I don't have the, the proper equipment. There's not really a good place that I know that I can see the stars as well as he can. What advice would you give to them or like how much would it cost them to get the equipment that they need to kind of start and where would you lead them in, in the direction of, of starting? Yeah, I think the first thing you need is not, you know, I mean, it's not really the equipment. It's you just need the drive and the passion to want to do it. You know, I mean, that's the most important thing. Just be passionate about what you want to do if you do want to be if you do want to do astrophotography or or time lapse or or photography just you know be passionate about what you're going to want to do if you're going to make a big investment on it i mean because it's not cheap to get into this i mean cameras are expensive and lenses are expensive time lapse gear can be expensive so you know um if you if if you get into it in that in that level just make sure it's something you want to do but yeah as far as the the equipment goes i mean you know, you can get lower end cameras for probably around a thousand bucks that do everything they need to do for time lapse and for astrophotography and for regular landscape photography. And then the lens, you know, lenses, unfortunately, you, you pay, you pay for what you get lenses wise. I mean, you, you know, if you're paying $3,000 for a lens, you're getting a really good lens usually. And that's, that's what I found is the, the glass is very expensive for lenses. That's probably the biggest expense for photography. Um, you know, I use a pretty nice, I have nice lenses, but you, you know, I, I didn't always have nice lenses, even when I was making the video existence. And when I was in college, I didn't have money for expensive cameras and lenses. So I was using some pretty cheap stuff. You know, I was using a, a few lenses online. They're like three, four hundred, five hundred dollars. I was using those, um, for, for that time period. But yeah, if you want to get a time lapse, just get, you know, a nice camera lens, tripod, and then, uh, an intervalometer. It's a little device that triggers the camera to take pictures over time. So like it'll take a picture every two or three seconds or even every one second for, you know, you can let it run for an hour, two hours or 15 minutes and you'll end up with all these pictures that you can combine into a time lapse. I mean, that's the most basic form of time lapse. I mean, that's essentially what it is. It's just a bunch of pictures combined to make a video. But yeah, photography wise, just, you know, lens, camera, tripod pretty simple simple as that cool yeah my wife is a photographer so i know <laughs> her yeah. her whole christmas present has sometimes been a lens because <laughs> they can they can run pretty expensive 
but oh yeah it's i mean i live fairly modestly you know and that's pretty much the one ex- the one heavy expense i always have is just camera gear and hard drives camera gear hard drives computer stuff camera gear hard drives computer stuff it's just a constant repeat but you know anyways cool all right michael um thank you so much for all this but now it's time for our final push and this is where i ask you to reach through the microphone and grab the shoulder of one of the listeners that you have already inspired today to do anything creative and they're thinking maybe you know i could do it too um maybe it's time to do it and kind of give them that final push into action just really i don't know it sounds super cheesy this is like the cheesiest possible thing i could say but you you really do need to follow your heart on it you know if you have a drive to do something if you have the drive to go out and take pictures just go do it you know i mean it's it's as easy as that it's just the do something for you do something that's going to make you happy or try something new that that might you know be something you enjoy because you never you know you could go out and you know, go and do this and find out that it's, you know, it it does become addicting. Like I, you know, I didn't know that this would be my career before I picked up a camera. I didn't know how, you know, how could you? Um, But after shooting, you know, and, and having a good time going out, taking pictures, even just in high school, I pretty quickly realized this is what I want to do. This is my favorite thing to do. I'm going to do this all the time. You never know. You could go out um, you could, you could, you know, be procrastinating on going out and taking pictures or trying it and then go out and try and realize it's something that you really, really are passionate about. You never know. So just go do it. Just go do it. I love it. <laughs> uh, Michael, thank you so much for coming on the show today and for giving us that push. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's been, it's been awesome to be here. I really appreciate it. Of course, man. Um, and you can find Michael on his website, which is shanebloomphoto.com. S H A I N B L U M photo dot com. On Facebook he's Shane Bloom Photo. On Instagram, Shane Bloom Photography. And on Twitter it's Shane Bloom. And you should also definitely, definitely, definitely go to his Vimeo account, Vimeo.com slash Shane Bloom to see all those different time lapse and most of the videos that we talked about. Um and you can find all those resources, as I said, at our show notes page at yourcreativepush.com slash Michael Shane Bloom. Michael, thank you again. Yeah, thank you so much. Wow, I love that talk with Michael. Thank you so much for coming on the show. You know, it's <laughs> it's funny listening back to the interview. I sound like such a nerd, um, basically just complimenting everything he has ever done. I, but I think I did that because I, you know, wanted to mention all of them because I wanted to make sure that you guys check them out. You know, you think about someone who photographs and videos nature um, in outer space, and you just kind of wonder what somebody could do with that material. Um, you know, how far they could actually go with it. And I think Michael just really pushes his creativity and really pushes the boundaries of what can be done with that type of material. Um, like saying what he does is, is one thing, but actually seeing it is, is something else. Like you, you can actually see what he is doing, not just as a photographer or videographer, or time-lapse, time-lapseographer, <laughs> whatever that's called, but as an artist, you know, Mere City is epic proof of that and like i said in my opinion you know as a just a human being on earth who has seen a lot of different art mirror city is one of my favorite pieces of art i love that thing it just like tickles my brain in the all the right ways and it it really plays into all the things that i try to do with my music videos um with the timing and message and oh i just i love it i love it i love it and i get that it's not everybody's cup of tea not everyone is going to think about outer space the way that I like to, and not everyone thinks about nature the way I do or Michael does. Um, but it's just so fun when you can find that random thing that you can connect with so fully. And sometimes it's even more fun when you're the only one that does like when you find a band that nobody knows about, and then you get almost pissed whenever that band gets big. Cause it was kind of like your thing. It was like your thing that you connected to personally. I think that idea just goes back to why you have to create your art, especially if one of your fears is that nobody else will get it. There's too many people on this planet for not one person to get it. Um, but many people I think will fit into the grooves of what you're trying to say, but you just have to do it and you have to put it out there. But especially if you don't think that people are going to connect with it, that means that you got to do it because somebody will. And that makes it so much more of a special connection. So please 
go and do your art, especially if you have this weird idea, um, this crazy idea that you're not sure will stick. You know, you got to throw it against the wall and see if it does stick. And even if you don't want to send it to, you know, the entire world, if you don't want to post it on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or whatever, send it to me, youngmen at yourcreativepush.com. I'd love to see it and uh, let you know what I think. And I'll be honest, but I'll probably be nice too because I like a lot of art. On tomorrow's show, we've got Art by Ty. Yeah, it's that my wife always says, because I can't, it's hard to explain to people yet. She says, like, I basically dream while I'm awake. And I and while I'm drawing, I don't think I really don't think at all. So I I can start from an idea of like, okay, I want to draw a rhinoceros, and that'll be the starting point. But I never know what what the finished piece is going to be and what it's going to say and what the story is. And I don't think about any of that while I'm drawing. And then when I'm done, I usually experience the drawing for the first time after I'm done, after I put the pen down and I and I, I signed it. Then I just I stare at it and sometimes I don't understand what it is for four or five years later or until someone sort of explains it to me but I know it all comes from raw emotion and real real thought with inside me but I you know I don't I don't know exactly what I'm making at the time Ty is an awesome artist and he comes on the show to tell us about his creative process and about how he travels the country to go to different art shows and what that is kind of like Uh, And he also drew a nice picture while we were talking. But a great conversation with him, and it will definitely push you to get your work done. But hopefully today you were pushed enough to get your work done that you need to get done today. Um, So go and do that crazy idea. Go and finish whatever it was that you've already started. Whatever it is, just put the time in and get it done. Have a great rest of your day. I love you, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.